Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening, everyone. There are calls tonight for the state government to provide more certainty for Tasmanian businesses doing it tough. It comes after a joint state and federal support package was unveiled yesterday, but there's already criticism it won't go far enough. When one of Hobart's most popular fine dining venues was forced to shut its doors in the midst of the pandemic, it was a wake-up call for the state's entire hospitality sector. I just didn't have confidence where the industry was going to be going up on the back of JobKeeper finishing up and other, and, and, and other, other bits of government support. With that uncertainty still looming for small operators like Willing Brothers, there are calls for the state government to provide a roadmap out of any future lockdowns if a COVID outbreak was to once again reach Tasmanian shores. We do need a little bit more clarity about the plan for Tasmania in the future with COVID still in the world and likely to be never eradicated but uh, and still, still in our community. What is the Tasmanian plan for that? If we do see a case rolling out in the state, we will know quickly which areas would need to shut and again we would know quickly which businesses would need to remain open. With around 38,000 small businesses serving as the backbone of Tasmania's economy, there are concerns the $20 million support package unveiled by the government yesterday won't go far enough. The Premier indicating he would swoop in with further support if needed. Should there become a compelling need for us to look at other measures, then obviously we would look at other measures. A move sure to be welcomed by businesses in need of a lifeline. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmanian News. The takeover bid for Huon Aquaculture is heating up, with Brazilian meat company JBS making a parallel offer overnight by lowering the minimum shareholder votes to 50.1% needed to buy out the salmon giant. The move will likely reduce the influence of Andrew Forrest's 18.5% shareholding in the company. Um, the founders of the company and the board are supporting this proposal and offer. Um, obviously what's happened this week with Andrew Forrest taking a stake in the company has complicated things to an extent and they're now trying to make this a cleaner transaction. Experts say for Dr Forrest to be able to increase his influence, he would need to make a takeover offer for the entire company. Mandatory COVID-19 vaccinations for Tasmanian aged care workers will come into effect next month. From September 17, anyone working at a residential facility other than undertaking maintenance will not be permitted to enter unless they've received at least one dose and are booked in for a second. Exemptions will apply for those unable to be vaccinated due to medical conditions or age. Tasmanians are being urged to secure any loose items outside with a severe weather warning for damaging winds across the state tomorrow. Wind gusts of more than 100 kilometres an hour are likely and some elevated areas could have destructive gusts of 125 kilometres an hour. But they are expected to ease in the afternoon and early evening. We'll have your full weather forecast later in the bulletin. Fans have packed Utah Stadium to watch the Hawks take on the Dogs in the last Tasmanian AFL game of the year. But with a furious Premier threatening to ban the league, it could be the last match in the state for longer than just one off-season. A parting gift to a footy legend after 17 seasons in service. But fans checking into today's Hawks Dogs clash had another potential goodbye on their minds. An apoplectic Peter Gutwin threatening to ban the AFL after it wouldn't give a timeline for a team despite receiving the Carter report. I'll be devastated, but um, I'll just travel when I could. I think it'd be really disappointing for, for Tasmanians and the, and the uh, opportunity for the youth of Tassie to go watch a couple of AFL games. I think. You know, at what point do we have to just say, you know, enough's enough, we need a Tasmanian team? It's not just fans who'd be left reeling should the Premier follow through. No footy comes with a cost. We know that when an AFL game is played in the state and when the country is open, uh, we have tourists from all across the country coming to us to see their team play. But the business case for a team here, now undeniable. We say to our Premier, you know, good on you, hold tight, hold firm. We know that uh, the AFL could put a team into our state overnight if they really wanted to. 
with the footy world standing in support of the state too. Broadcaster Tim Lane telling Colin Carter himself that joint ventures or relocation won't cut it. Well, you've put down pegs on three different campsites. I can only see one that is suitable for uh, the green jumper. Hawthorne and North Melbourne declined to comment on our Premier's threat or the report itself. Both clubs are expected to make a decision on their future here by September. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. An internationally renowned comedian and writer has celebrated a major academic achievement with the University of Tasmania. Dr. Gatsby began her studies at Utah's in 1998. Smithton born Hannah Gadsby receiving the award of Doctor of Letters for her work inspiring the global LGBTIQ community. While bringing her Tasmanian upbringing into her stories, including her award-winning show, Nanette. Your story is as alive as you are. Never stop paying attention to it. Be alive. Breathe. Be somebody. Steam engines, tractors and farm livestock roared through Oatlands today for a celebration of the town's history. Residents and locals from further out gathering for the annual Heritage and Bullock Festival. Travelling slowly side by side, these bullocks transporting farm supplies as the southern Midlands town of Oatlands takes a step back in time. We're going to be demonstrating old time farming this weekend as well as a lot of the events that's on up the street and that has all tried to basically take it back 100 years. Crowds feasting their eyes on trades and machinery from a bygone era and learning a little more about the town's heritage. Oh, we're out here with the grandchildren to see the, the old antiques and the old steam machines and the bullocks and how it used to be in the old days. People like sticky beak and having a look at it and seeing the amount of work that's gone into doing that up, it's quite remarkable, isn't it? The first draft bow we had was convicts and human power was pretty near useless. So then these fellows here behind me, the Bullocks, is what settled not only Tasmania but Australia. They're the ones that really opened up the inland. The third annual Bullock and Heritage Festival, even seeing the younger generation jump on board. <laughs> We've been looking at the machines over there. And the little racing cars over there. With locals and some furry friends donning costumes, telling real stories from the past. These are the World War I nurses' outfits. When the nurses came home, they looked after the soldiers as they did actually over in Europe. The festival will continue at Callington Park and inside Oatlands Heritage Buildings tomorrow. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. The TSL's penultimate round has seen some surprise victories across the competition. Clarence lay the ghost of last week's heartbreak loss to rest, while North Hobart grabbed its second win of the year. It was a topsy-turvy round in the TSL with upsets all across the competition. At times, even the action felt upside down. Kicks it over his head and through for a goal! Jack McCulloch's spectacular seated effort was just one of his three goals. Will Splan booting five to help put down the Pies by 14 as they took their second win of the season. Coming off heartbreak last week, a motivated Clarence threatened all game to pull away from the Blues. Only for the latter leaders Launceston to peg them back. With the match in the balance, hearts were in mouths once again at Blundstone Arena, the Roos surviving a shot after the siren to run out two-point winners. A scrappy first half of the twin oval saw North Launceston eke out a 20-point lead. The Tigers corrected their goal-kicking woes in the third, ahead at the final change. But the Bombers rose to the challenge in a nine-goal-to-one final quarter. Winners by 38 points. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The Devonport Strikers have piled on seven goals at Valley Road to stay atop of the NPL Tasmania ladder. Meanwhile, at Darcy Street, South Hobart have beaten Kingborough in a dramatic fashion to all but secure third place. After Kobe Kemp converted a penalty against his old side, South clicked into gear, scoring twice in the final 10 minutes. 
Devon have handed out an almighty beating to Kurana, winning 81 to 31 as round 20 of the RACTI Tasmanian Netball League kicked off today. The final round of the regular season saw the second place Cavaliers also notch up a 65 to 42 win over Arrows. The action continues tonight and tomorrow morning at the Hobart Netball and Sports Centre before finals begin next week. Jake Bertwistle has rebounded in style from his Tokyo Olympics disappointment, winning at the first opportunity. The Tasmanian led the pack home in a qualifying race for the World Triathlon Championship Series event in Montreal this morning. Bertwistle and three other Australians will now compete in the finals tonight. Good evening everyone. 16 in Hobart today, Launceston and Burnie both 15 and 14 in Devonport. Across the state, Friendly Beach is 17, 16 in St Helens and Grove, the islands and Wynyard all 15 and 9 in Liawini. Low level cloud can be seen across most of the state today with some wave patterns visible about the eastern half. Further out, a frontal cloud band lies over the southern ocean with some low level cloud about southern western Australia, south Australia and Queensland. Tomorrow's chart shows high pressure systems over the Tasman Sea and the southern coast of Australia as a vigorous cold front approaches the southwest of Tasmania. Northwesterly winds 30 to 40 knots about the south tomorrow, increasing to 35 to 45 knots in the southwest, swells building to 7 metres in the west and south. And there is a severe weather warning for damaging and destructive northwesterly winds for all of Tasmania tomorrow and a gale warning for all coastal waters, the southwest and central plateau lakes, as well as all southeast inshore waters. A road weather alert is current for roads above 600 metres in the central plateau, a flood watch for the Derwent and Hewer River catchments and a warning to sheep graziers for most districts. Showers and 15 in Hobart tomorrow, Richmond 16, 14 in Ouse. Windy and showers in Launceston and Devonport, both 14, 12 in Deloraine. 13 in Burnie tomorrow, very windy and 14 in Strawn, Curry 15. And in the east, 14 in St Helens and Whitemark, both showers and windy there, and 16 in Swansea. Looking on to Monday now, showers about the western, central and southern areas, with snow falling to around 500 metres. Showers about the west and far south on Tuesday, mainly fine elsewhere. And on Wednesday, showers about the west and south, developing about the north during the day. Sunny in Perth and Adelaide tomorrow, 19 in Melbourne, Brisbane 25 and 34 in Darwin. And it's currently cloudy across the state with Hobart 13 degrees and 11 in Launceston and Devonport. And Lou, that's all in weather tonight. Beautiful, thanks for that Chelsea. And that's all your news for this Saturday evening. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.